Welcome back to the channel for a brand new Sorare video and on this video I'm going to talk to you guys about my potential new strategy over on Sorare from maybe August onwards and maybe even from March, end of March as well. As we all know the competitions will be changing from March and this is how it's going Luke. And obviously we've got the August competitions as well. Now on this video I'm going to be sharing spreadsheets, spreadsheets and more spreadsheets. If you don't like spreadsheets then click off the video. If you love spreadsheets as such as this, um, I'll leave a link to this spreadsheet in the description of this video below. I did a tweet um, the other day talking about the spreadsheet. A lot of spreadsheets are going to be used um, on this video. And a lot of you did seem to like that and wanted me to share that as well. So this will be available. I'll talk through it very quickly right now. So you've got the Premier League competition. This is from August onwards, by the way. You've got the La Liga, the Classic, and in season. So you can have up to three teams multi-entry for each division. The Bundesliga and the Champions. So again, those are brand new to Serrera. You have you know, Liverpool stacks. I have six Liverpool stacks here and six across here as well. So a lot of teams to be putting in for the new uh, updates. And then just towards the, board, towards the bottom, I should say, um, I've kind of put challenges in a big bracket here. So these are both challenges, one for off-season um, and one for just European season as well. Now, just touching back on my guy, you see what I've done here with the MLS teams. So I've got three MLS rare teams and then kind of like two, two and a half European leagues. Now, I know they do clash and the interchange for a lot this season, but right now when MLS is not playing, if you're watching this video, at the start of Feb, um, you, know, you might have two different separate teams. Obviously, you can multi you know, interchange this as well. So, for example, if Bergs has got a good game but Messi's injured, Bergs can come across here um, if, obviously, MLS and European are both playing at the same time, if that makes sense. Hence why I've put this in a big bracket here. Again, feel free to edit this and change this around um, and just have one for challenges. Contenders done the same here as well. And then just one for under 23. As we all know, from August onwards, um, just behind my head here, it's just a classic for on the 23. So again, I'll leave a link to the spreadsheet um, in the description of this video below. So you can check that out. You just need to file and download it to an Excel page. And then obviously, obviously you guys can then just go ahead and just put in what you want. Get rid of what you want. As I've done here. So this is my spreadsheet and my strategy for the upcoming season. As you can see, the, the bits I've kind of put in red, I won't be playing, I don't think. Now... You'll see, I've just put plays in for the sake of it. These aren't definite plays. I've tried to stack where I can. Um, again, this is not you know, a definite. These are just plays I've been putting in. You'll see plays in orange. These are my, these are my 20 under 23 players. They can kind of interchange between the Bundesliga and Champions competition with the under 23 competition as well. The ones in red are my transfer targets. So no hiding there. Declan Rice, Jal Pedro and Pascal Gross from Brighton. My main targets there. This here, so I'm putting a bit of cash to a side. So again, basically in, in a nutshell, my strategy for the start of the season in terms of these four divisions here in Champions, Bundesliga, La Liga and Premier League is to play mainly Classic. So you know, from August onwards, I'll have a lot, all the old season cards. But I do plan to buy um, a, a few in-season cards as well from August onwards. So I'm holding a bit of cash back or a bit of Ethereum back and we're buying you know, a few outfield players. Now, one tip I would recommend is getting an old season goalkeeper card. So if you can get a goalkeeper, now again, I do apologize for my camera keep flashing as well, guys. Um, I'm not sure why that is. But getting some old season cards and goalkeeper's most expensive card usually, and then buying four in season cards, if that makes sense. I think in season goalkeeper cards can be so expensive. Hence why All Black is in there. Pep lose a chance of a target as well. Again, this is for the new season. So we're keeping a lot of money back, well, a bit of money back for the in season card, but mainly. I can't do that every season. So my main goal is going to be have these classic competitions at the same time as well. Now, my gallery, I'm quite lucky. My gallery is heavy focused into the top five divisions anyway, the Premier League cards. As you can see, these are all rare cards in my gallery. A full buying stack, you know, really good Premier League players. brought Gundogan recently as well, which I'll touch on in a moment in time. So really strong, you know, cards in the rare market. And that's where I'm going to be going strong as well from August onwards. Now, in my opinion, buying Premier League cards, you've got a lot of opportunities to put them in different competitions. So you can never kind of run out of places to put them. Obviously, up to six clamps here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six in Classic. So Premier League cards, Liga cards, Bundesliga cards, you can't get enough of. Hence why I'll be going fully focused. Um, well, be, be, be fully focused in those sort of leagues, if that makes sense. 
French cards, you know, Matt Mignon, Tio Hernandez, Oshman. Obviously got a transfer window. Oshman might move to Chelsea. Those cards are okay, but for example, Oshman at the moment in time, he's only got three slots available in, in Champions 1, Champions 2, or Champions 3 in the Classics, if that makes sense. So he's only limited to three lineups, if that makes sense, where, you know, the likes of Trippier can play in all Champions and all Premier League. So I think Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga are not undervalued, not underappreciated, but I think people will hopefully start to realise that those sort of cards will be high in demand if they're not already so. Um, come August at the same time as well. Again, I'm going to explain all this. Again, you probably see it on screen right now. Challenges, places where I put in pink slash purple are places that I probably need to, to purchase moving onwards as well. MLS team looks quite strong, very strong. In fact, defensive stats, I know Jose, Gale, Messi, Bigger Rossi. Um, again, same for these two teams down here as well. Now, on the 23, we get obviously three teams here. I thought I was very strong here, and I have got very strong teams, but depth wise, I'm lacking again for this spreadsheet and the spreadsheet I'll, I'll share. I've done an off season on the 23 as well. Again, feel free to mess around with this if you'd like to as well. But you'll see got a few gaps here and there, especially for the off season. Again, I know the interchange, so I can put Vinny Jr. in there you know, at the end of Feb for a few months, for example, but I do need it on the 23. MLS forward. Any suggestions, leave them below in this video. Um, the names just escaped my head. I was on Twitch yesterday. Um, names just kind of got over my head. Um, but yeah, same for Classic as well. So on the 23 and same for Contenders as well. Probably won't be playing three glouts here. The Celtic stack, um, defensive stack in here. Need a forward to enter. It kind of put into here at the same time as well. Now, I've seen a lot of discussion on Twitter and on YouTube about people with super rares. You know, it might be the same people that's going from limited to rares or rares to super rares. What do I do with my super rares? I might have got, you know, 10 super rares. Do I keep them? Do I play them? More for the cap modes. What do I do? Now, in my opinion, you've got the threshold between now and August. I would keep your cards and really, you know, grind that threshold as much as possible. In my opinion, European cards, you'll probably see the lowest point between now and start of June time. And um, believe it or not, guys, when you know when when the league starts coming back again over the summer, people start planning for the for the new season. You'll hopefully see a rise in both old season cards and in season cards as well. Just for example, you've got the likes of Rodri from Man City. If his brand new 24-25 season comes out at, I don't know, let's just say five thousand pounds um that, that's just extraordinary. But let's just say it goes double double the price that the card is right now. You should hopefully see these cards follow suit. Obviously not as much as that, but maybe an extra, you know, 50% or whatever it might be. Because these obviously classic cards can win in-season cards. And that's the same hopefully with, with Super Rare as well. I'm hopefully hoping now with the removal threshold to rare, put that back in to the, uh, the certain leagues. I'm hoping Super Rare gets a nice little boost um, at the same time as well. So hopefully, you know, Champion Super Rare will have a really, really attractive price pot at the end of it. And that should hopefully attract people back into Super Rare. Hence why I personally think if you've got Super Rare cards, Metal Rare cards, you've got one Cap 240 team or, you know, 10 players in Super Rare, I would personally hold around the threshold between now and August. Hopefully by August time, those cards will be sort of the same sort of value. And then use that value to either, either reinvest in new season cards at Rare or Limited, for example, um, or keep them in CLC so you get on and re, you know, reevaluate then at the same time, if that makes sense. So Super Rares I'm keeping. I do need potentially a, a champ Super Rare. Again, I'm going to keep all these cards at the moment. I've got a couple for sale. Um, you initially got Champions and Challengers. Um, I'll touch on Contenders in a moment, moment in time. But yeah, Super Rares-wise, I will be keeping... In majority of these, and then when it comes around to August, I'll kind of just see what's happening again. There's a lot of transfer windows, so Kaika could move to a to Roma, for example, a champ team. You've got Sal's Nottingham Forest, will they get relegated? So there's a lot to happen between now and the end of the season. So I'm keeping my cards close to my chest in that one, and keeping my money where it is, and my cards where they are on super rare, and focusing more on rare. Again, it depends on your galley size and your galley valuation. I want to be a rare whale basically i want to you know every weekend to have at least you know, two premier league teams a league team bundesliga team and three champion teams that, that's where i want to be and i think having those premier league cards you're you know expensive don't get me wrong but there's got more opportunity to put those players in laps so just for example you might have i don't know a burgers for example boss Agli. there's only three laps you can play him in obviously you've got special weeklies to come potentially as well 
there was only three opportunities to play Boss Cagley where, you know, with a, a, a Rodri, for example, I know the value is going to be completely different, um, but let's just talk about my gallery, my strategy. There's six opportunities to play that Rodri card, if that makes sense. So most recently, I've made a few, per well, I made a purchase um, at the moment, and that is Gundogan. You'll see I've got a nice ETH balance at the same time as well, hence why that'll be going to classic cards and a few in-season cards as well. So I picked up a Gundogan again. This is this is before I won, um, well, after I won the Arrow. Um, but I wanted the Gundogan a while before that. Now, new season does come into play at the end of March. So I'm looking at, I think it's five or six games where I can potentially play in the in-season competition and the Classic in the Champions as well. So using Gundogan to potentially win me some cash. Um, it might be five or six games. Who knows? But obviously then got to go from August onwards in the Classic mode at the same time. So I'm not buying new season cards right now for the sake of it. If they're there for the same sort of price, I'll get them. If not, I'm happy to buy the old season cards at the same time. So that is my strategy moving forward. Um, still a lot to do, still a lot of working out to do, still a lot of purchase to make as well. But I hope that's been, made a bit more of a sense what I'll be doing moving forward. And again, um, I'll leave a link to the spreadsheet um, in the description of this video as well. So you can guys can go in here, download the spreadsheet into an Excel sort of format and literally put your plays in here. And feel free to remove these, blank these out if you're not playing all these divisions. That's what's quite nice and something you know, easy in the eye, if, if you want to call it that. And to have a look at and try to sort your teams out. If you've got a smaller guy with just two or three teams, obviously you won't need this, hopefully not anyway, um, moving forward. But that is my sort of strategy moving forward. I plan to buy Premier League, Bundesliga and La Liga cards. That's where my main focus will be, along with some under 23s as well at the same time. In season, right now, all season cards, I don't really care to be honest. If the value is right, I'll go for the in season ones, but I'm not paying, you know, 20, 30% more in. Um, for the next few months for in-season. There's still, still, still plenty of games left in the Premier League to get the end-season cards, don't get me wrong. Again, this weekend, if we just open up Surrey Data very quickly, I'll just talk through my my in-season Premier League lineup that I could potentially run. Um, it's on here somewhere. I did this last night. So this is my... I'll just move this across very slightly on here so you guys um, can see this. Just bear with me one moment in time. There we go. So just above my head here, you've got the in-season Premier League sort of cards. Alison Hope hoping he's back away at Brentford. Um, again, I won this card, um, Malenko um, from Everton. Home at Crystal Palace on Monday night. Rodri, Alvarez are the all-new in-season cards. And obviously you get one classical old-season card, which will be Madison for this lineup. So I'm hoping this does well. I think you need about 300, 360, 370 points. So fingers crossed, and um, this can get me in here. So lucky I won this card last weekend. Um, I'll be playing the in-season rare competition this, this weekend, all being wow. But that is it for me, guys. Again, one last time, I'll leave this link in the description below. I hope that's useful. Any comments below, any, any questions you have regarding your update, I will try and help as much as possible. Let me know in the comment section below or drop me a DM on Twitter. But thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.